many, many, many of you uh, probably have heard the term standard deviation. A lot of times, you know, if you're in a class or uh, in college or something, or even in high school maybe, uh, your professor might tell you, okay, the grades in the class um, where the mean was uh, 75 or a mean was a, the mean was 80 and the standard deviation was 10 points, right? And many of you have heard that but don't even really know what, the, what standard deviation of 10 points means. We're going to clear that up here. Much like the mean and the variance were extremely important central topics that you'll just see over and over again, the standard deviation is even more common than the variance when using and really describing sets of data. And again, the purpose of it is to measure the spread of the data. So let's walk down this logic and I'll explain how easy standard deviation is to understand. But as we talk about it, just think to yourself, okay, we're just trying to describe the spread of the data. So that's what we're doing. Now recall, I will say, recall, uh, we've already learned the sample variance. The sample variance. And that I will change colors for. And that was denoted S squared is the sum of the data points minus the average value squared over n minus 1. We've done that before. We understand that. Great. Now recall also the population. There's a reason I'm writing all this down again, so just kind of bear with me. The population variance, I'll go ahead and just rewrite that again. We called it sigma squared, and it was the sum of all of the data points minus the population mean, that's what that is, everything squared just like before and instead of n minus 1 it was n, the total number of people or items in the population. This is what we've learned before. These do measure the spread of the data. They do. Um, but the problem, if you want to call it a problem, is that because we squared everything it does measure in a relative sense how spread the data is. You can look at two variances of two different data sets and figure out which one's more spread by looking at which one's larger. But the problem is we've squared all of our data points. So because we've squared it, uh, all the differences, we've squared everything. So when we get a variance of 10.9, or if we get a variance of 5, what does that mean? It, because everything's been squared, it's not in the units of our original data points anymore. In other words, if I calculate the variance of the grades in a classroom, like I, I, I may have some students in a class and the average value or the mean of everybody's grade might be an 80, right? And I might calculate the variance of all that data to try to figure out how spread apart everybody is about the mean. And let's say I cal calculate the variance that ends up being 15, right? If I calculate the variance of 15, is that 15 points, like 15 test points? No, it isn't because I subtracted everything from the mean, but then I squared it. So that's kind of why everything is labeled out here with a square. It's reminding you that, that the calculation you did does represent how spread the data is. But I've squared everything, and so I can't really say that the when I say the variance of ten point uh, uh, variance of ten, in ter talking about the grades, that it's ten points variance plus or minus the mean because everything has been squared. So what we're going to do is fix that little problem right now, and I'm going to go off to the other board and write that down. So what we do is we have the sample standard deviation. And it's so simple, once you understand what it is, it's great. The sample standard deviation is labeled, let me go ahead and do this one in red, is labeled S. And it's literally the variance that we know how to calculate already, but we just take the square root of it. See, because the variance is kind of like a calculation that involves all the squaring of all of the differences of the data points. So if we just take the square root of that, then we eliminate the squaring business. We do the square rooting at the end, obviously, after we've calculated the variance here. And then from that, we get just S. There's no S squared here anymore. When you see S by itself, you refer to it as the standard deviation. So if I had to put it down in all of its glory, it would be the sum of the data points, Xi minus uh, the, abs the uh, average value, squaring each difference like that, divided by n minus 1. This calculation, right as it sits, is the variance. It's exactly what I've written here, okay? So to calculate the standard deviation, you do all of that, 
and then at the very end, you take the square root of the whole thing. So when you do the square rooting business at the end, you don't call it the variance anymore, you call it the standard deviation. You use the same letter S, but you don't put a square over there. And this is a reminder that you don't have this squaring business anymore. So uh, if I have, for instance, a classroom where the mean is an 80, all right, uh, and the standard deviation after I calculate it by doing all this business with the square root at the end, the sample standard deviation. If the standard deviation is 10, then the units of my standard deviation match the units of my data set. So if I'm talking about points in a classroom grade, then the mean is 80 points and the standard deviation of 10 means 10 points, plus or minus the mean. It means it's, it means, that's like a, a joke, right? It means that on average, most of the data fell in between 10 points packed around the mean. That's what that is. It doesn't mean all the data did. It means that one standard deviation on the plus or on the minus side of the mean, it tells me that a good chunk of the data, a, a nice large amount of the data falls within uh, that amount of the mean. So if I have a standard deviation of 10 points on a test, and the mean was an 80, that means lots of the points, lots of the, um, of the grades in the room fell between 70 and 90 because that's 10 points plus or minus if the standard deviation were 10. If the standard deviation were 15, then it would be 15 points around the mean. Most of my data fell with between t uh, around 15 points around the mean. So the standard deviation to me actually makes a whole lot more sense to, to, to really talk about than the variance. You have to introduce the variance first because that's where the genesis of the calculation comes from and there are lots of equations and statistics that use the variance. But whenever I'm describing a set of data to some person and I'm trying to give them a sense of how spread out it is, I'm almost always going to use the standard deviation because I can tell them, hey, the mean of the exam was 60, but the standard deviation was 30 points. What does that mean? That means that if I were to do that, let me just kind of go down here. If I had a really kind of poor result on my test and I said the mean, right, X bar was 60 points, right? And if I said the standard deviation in this case, let's say the standard deviation S was 30 points, then what does that mean? That means that here's 60, so 70, 80, 90, so here's 90 here. You subtract 30 up here, that would be 30 down here. That means that a large amount of my data fit into this window. When I have a standard deviation of 30 points, what it means is 30 points around the mean. That's what it is. It means that a good chunk of my data as a eyeball, as a calculation, actually falls between plus or minus the standard deviation in reference to my mean. So it makes a lot more sense to talk about standard deviation than variance in a lot of cases because I can tell you the standard deviation was 10 points or 20 points. Uh, the units of my standard deviation are the same as the units of my data set. All right, so let me go and write the rest of this down and we'll talk about it even, even a little bit more. Let's say that the, uh, this is the sample standard deviation. So let's say we have the population standard deviation. Right? So if this is the sample standard deviation, what do you think the population standard deviation would be? Well, first of all, you're going to use the symbol sigma to represent it, and you just take the population variance that we know how to calculate, and you take its square root. So really, it's the same sort of thing. It's the sum of the data values minus the population mean, each one of those differences squared, divided by the total population number of items you have, this, as it stands, is calculating the population variance. Exactly what we've talked about before, but to make it a standard deviation, we wrap the whole thing in a square root, do that at the very, very end. So these two items, the sample standard deviation, uh, which is just the square root of the sample variance, and the population standard deviation, which is the square root of the population variance, are extremely central, important uh, topics in uh, in statistics. I cannot stress it enough. Uh, I'm going to do some examples to show you how to calculate this with a real data set, but just to kind of just drill it home one last time. Let's say I had some ages of people in a classroom, right? And I told you that the mean 
of the ages in the room, let's say I have like 20 people in the room, the mean was, um, let's say, 15 years old. Right? That tells you where the middle of the road, like roughly where the middle of the ages lie of everybody in that room. All right? And then I tell you, because this is a small sample of people, let's say, in the room, I tell you that the uh, standard deviation S is, uh, let's say, 10 years or 10 years. Then what you should visualize in your head is that if everybody here is everybody in the room, then the mean is going to be 15, right? But the standard deviation tells me that on average, most or a good chunk of my data falls plus or minus 10 years around this mean. So that means 10 years plus over here would be 25, and 10 years minus over here would be 5. So then in between these values here, a good chunk of my data lies. Now some of the data does lie out here and some of the data does lie out here, but a good chunk of it lies within plus or minus 10 years of the mean. Okay. In contrast, I'm not going to draw another picture, if the standard deviation were, let's say, two years, right? If the standard deviation were two years, that would mean that the mean would be here, and I would be plus two years and minus two years, so up to 17 and down to 13, very tightly packed data. It would tell me that a lot of my data falls within plus or minus two years of the mean, which is 15. So I can easily give you two pieces of information about a data set the mean and the standard deviation, and you can instantly get an idea of what that data set looks like. The mean helps you visualize where the center of the data is. The standard deviation tells you how broad it is, right? If I have a very large standard deviation, then lots of values lie on both sides of that mean, right? If I have a very small standard deviation, then I have a very tightly compact data set, plus or minus however many units your standard deviation is. So I've tried to give you some examples. I want you to internalize what this means because it's so important for future lessons. Um, make sure you understand the concept behind standard deviation and then meet me on in the next lesson where we will go on and just do some calculations and show you how to calculate the standard deviation. Um, the calculation is, is really the same as we've done in the last section, but I still think it's important for you to get some practice with it. So follow me on and we'll get some practice with calculating the standard deviation in statistics. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.